Hi, my name is Pia and I'm the online editor for The Gateway. This is the forum recap for the International Students Association, which happened on February 24th at noon. An issue emphasized across a variety of races is the loneliness that international students can face, even in the best of times. A solution offered by both candidates in the Vice President Operations and Finance race was the creation of a permanent space for international students on campus. However, when it comes to where this space should be on campus, candidates differed. In Emily Kamani's remarks, she told students that she would be a strong advocate for creating a space within the Students' Union building. By creating this space, she hopes she could remove the cultural barriers that some international students, like her parents, encounter when they come to campus. I am a strong advocate for a permanent sub, a permanent sub space in, uh, for international students. When questioned about how she plans to create this space in sub, given that the building is very limited for space, Kamani reassured the audience members that she had discussed the proposal with current SU employees to ensure that it can get done. So um, before I put that on my platform, I did have conversations with the staff at the SU to make sure that this is something that I can do and not just an empty promise. And so after having conversations with the staff, I do believe that this is a very tangible thing that I can do. Her opponent, Julia Veloso, took a different stance on the issue. After discussing the need for office space with ISA executives, like President Chanpreet Singh, Veloso affirmed that a permanent space is needed, but claims sub is not the best option. She attributes this to the flexibility of subspaces, saying international students need a space that is truly permanent. Uh, having talked with Chanpreet, I, um, he it's not, I guess, the most ideal way to um, put uh, this room within sub because of um, constant like tenants um, and moving in and out and these contracts. It's a very, uh, it's a very like flexible space, and um, really international students really need a permanent space where they can always be, I guess, um, they they can rely that the space is always going to be there for them. According to Veloso, a better location would be closer to the international students' services on campus, making the trip to the space more convenient for the students it is supposed to serve. Overall, it is heartening to see both candidates commit on working towards a more dedicated spaces for international students on campus. While there are valid questions about both candidates' proposed locations, the creation of this space in and of itself should improve the lives of international students, regardless of where it ends up being. A common criticism of the SU over previous years is they haven't always prioritized the needs of international students. At the forum, presidential candidate Rowan Lee had the opportunity to directly address these concerns in a series of tough questions from the moderator and ISA Vice President Student Life, Safwan. One question specifically pointed out that this year's executive goals document, which outlines the organization's core goals and promises for the year, only mentioned international students once. Safwan then asked Lee why it is that candidates talk so much about international students during SU election campaigns, only for them to be forgotten while governing. Lee's response initially seemed to reject the premise of the question, saying that the number of words mentioned in a document isn't the best way to evaluate its content. Well, I will say that um, looking at a word count in a document is not necessarily an accurate way of assessing how important something is to someone. Um, that is, uh, there is a more nuanced way of looking at what the meaning of the document is. Importantly, Lee noted that many of the problems facing all students may impact international students more than others. As such, he asserted that international students can greatly benefit from the SU's advocacy around these broader issues. However, later on, Lee did acknowledge that the SU hasn't historically met up to their obligations for international students, contributing this issue to most of their executive teams being entirely composed of domestic students. No, I will not lie. In the past, it is true that international students have not had the level of access and prioritization in the students' union that they needed to. To improve the relationship between international students and the SU, Lee proposed stronger and better communications with the ISA. Over the past year, the ISA has drawn considerable attention in student governance, as the association took initiative on important advocacy efforts, such as online learning challenges, and became a student representative association. So my main priority would be working with uh, the ISA executive team, identifying your advocacy priorities for the year, figuring out where your priorities and our priorities match, and developing a plan of action to work together on them. Research is one of the most important aspects of a university education. 
This means that any type of opportunity for students to share and celebrate the research should be welcomed and readily accessible so that students know that their hard work will pay off. At today's ISA forum, VP academic candidate Abner Montero made it clear he wants to work hard to ensure that international students know that these opportunities apply to them too. When asked about how we will ensure that international students are well engaged and able to find research opportunities on campus, Montero makes it clear that he wants everyone to make sure it is known that these opportunities are available to everyone. I think there's a, there's a discourse around research that it's only meant for a specific, a specific type of person, a specific type of student. Montero's stance makes it clear he understands the unique challenges that international students face, specifically relating to research opportunities. At the center of his remarks, he makes it clear that the most essential thing is that international students know that these opportunities exist and that they are able to find all the information that they need. I really want to expose students to research through the faculty undergraduate research um, festivals, uh, making those resources available to them so they're able to find them, and working with the International Students Association to define what the different opportunities are on campus and bring those opportunities and develop some kind of system to show international students what's available. Access is at the center of Montiero's statements regarding research opportunities to international students, a very important aspect to consider. If students are not aware of these opportunities, that they even exist, they won't be able to apply for them in the first place. Collaboration with the ISA is a key point that Bontiero brings up throughout the entire forum, an essential aspect to ensure international students are getting the best education possible. And the other part of that is we also have on campus a lot of student journals and whatnot, and many students may feel like, you know, there's not a place for them in research because a lot of students want to get published and they want to do this and there's not a chance for that. But because we have these student-based uh, journals, students have the opportunity to, to go and apply for these, make the process much shorter. In the end, this discussion makes it clear that accessibility and collaboration are key points in ensuring that international students are able to pursue research opportunities with the help of the SU and the ISA. During today's forum, it was brought to attention that students on the Augustana campus were served frozen food over the winter break. When one is paying large amounts of tuition, it is expected that basic needs, such as food, will be handled with care. When VPSL candidates Talia Dixon and Daniela Carbajal were asked their feelings about this and how they would fix it, both had passionate responses. Moving forward, um, I would like to do my work around the meal plan um, as I want to implement new practices that have been used at other universities and used successfully to revolutionize the meal plan, not only at Augustana, but across campus to meet dietary restrictions, as well as be more accommodating for students and affordable. Dixon made it clear they were appalled with the situation at Augustana, and the response deems they do want to make changes. I hope Dixon offers more insight on this at future forums, due to the general statement because of the time constraints. Them wanting to ensure that students have affordable food throughout all of campus, specifically noting dietary restrictions, is a good point, as many students with dietary restrictions often do not have as large of a selection as those without. Carba Hall, from the Augustana campus, mentions that this is something that she started advocacy for and that she has been dealing with the food issue for a while. I have been advocating to all the executives at Augustana, all administrators, to the cafeteria. Um, I actually worked in the cafeteria at Augustana for more than two years, so I know the issues. There are issues that the food staff can be very racist to international students. I have fought against that. The fact that the food that international students sometimes are fed is a lower quality than the general diet. Carba Hall stresses that the issues of the residents' food services have been an issue for a while, and mentioning that international students face racism for simply inquiring about their basic needs is an important point and needs to be mentioned. Through bringing up important facts, Carvajal mentions that she's been fighting for these rights, but doesn't go into enough specifics about how she's been dealing with this or will be in the future. I hope that in a different form, Carvajal goes into greater detail about the efforts she wants to make and has been making on this issue. Well, that is all for the forum recap for the International Students Association Forum. We hope that you stay tuned into the Gateway to get all the up-to-date coverage on elections for the UASU.